Okay, so I'm going to attempt to make um, liquid soap for the first time. Um, and here I have my water, just plain water, and potassium hydroxide. They're flakes. So I'm going to add the water to the lye. Now, liquid soap is a bit different than um, than the other type of cold process. This is a cold process liquid soap method that I'm using, and I kind of have to, you always have to step away from your lie. I always measure it at least in arms. I, I spit. <sighs> I'm losing my words. I, uh, I stir at least in arms like the way, especially at the very beginning. Now, if there's any little crunchy sounds, keep going. But this one's clearing up, but it's very, very hot. So now we have to wait. My uh, oils, which are a majority, 95% are liquid, um, are heating up too. So when they're both the same temperature, we'll come right back. Okay, I'm back now. Um, now that these have had a little bit of a chance to cool, they're still quite warm. Um, but I'm going to add some honey to this one. The soap is going to be unscented, but I want it to have... Um, the, all of the wonderful properties that honey brings, um, and then I can just scent them however I want them. These are for gifts for Christmas. Um, so we'll just see, I'm going to put about a tablespoon in there and see what happens. So like I said, this is my very first time, so forgive me if things go awry. I tried the hot process method with this, and it didn't work for me. I was very disappointed in the results, and then I had all this potassium hydroxide I didn't know what to do with because it just wasn't my cup of tea. I just couldn't do um, with it what I had hoped to. There's a little piece of um, uh, beeswax in there. I'm not going to worry about that. It's pretty warm. It'll probably look at that. It's making it a little bit of an amber color, so it's burning. This is warm enough to to uh, burn it. I wanted a I wanted a golden uh, shower gel, so this is exactly what I wanted. Uh, I think some of it I will scent with um, banana, some of it with coconut, um, just some of those wonderful summer scents um, to kind of beat some of the wintertime blues, um, I think, with this. And of course, you know, um, whatever my friends like, that's what I'll... I will send it as too. But for me, I'm going to definitely do some banana and some coconut scents from my own kitchen. That is a nice orange color. I'm just going to give us some more light so you can see better what's going on. All right, hopefully that's a wee bit better. So you see, it's almost an orangey here. Yeah, it's like an orangey, um, an orangey color that the honey turned the potassium hydroxide. All right, so I'm gonna get my handy dandy stick blender. And we're going to try to get this started. It's potifying. Okay, so it's mixed. This is my plug. Alrighty, so we're gonna mix for the lye slowly and carefully into To start the stick blender up till we've got it all incorporated. Look at that nice, pretty honey color, and hopefully, we'll end up with a lovely amber clear soap. Oh, that's actually saponifying a lot quicker than I thought it would. Emulsifying, rather. It's going to saponify over the next 24 to 48 hours. And it should end up being kind of like a, a thick, thick paste, which then will dilute. Look at that, it's already bubbles. I'm 
definitely going to have to learn how to splice my videos together for this one. <laughs> I don't think my phone battery is going to last that long. actually already soap. Look at how crazy that is. It wouldn't have bubbles like that if it wasn't already soap. I don't think my uh, cold process um, sodium hydroxide soap's ever done this. This is really, really neat to see. Now, I'm not going to add glycerin and all of those things that um, some of the other tutorials add. I'm just going to follow um, the cold process method. I have a Facebook, I'm on a Facebook page and this is how they do things and I thought it was brilliant when I saw somebody else do it on another YouTube channel. So if you want to learn how to do this, you can subscribe to or ask to be added to um, a cold process soapers uh, Facebook page and there's lots of people besides myself that can also help you. I'm just gonna have a look here and I'm liking that. That's a light trace. So I'll come back in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to let this sit for 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'll give you an update. I'm just going to cover it up, and uh, we'll see where we're at. Okay. So it's kind of messy here in the soap kitchen, um, but this is what happened in the morning. Uh, last night I blended it several times. It kind of looks like it's going through the gel phase. It's supposed to stay like this, but um, it's not very sticky yet. We'll see what happens in 24 hours. I did do a clarity test, and it's not very clear yet. So that's where we're at with the clarity as well. And I have some um, thickener I'm going to try. So let's see if I can make a nice thick gel soap for one of my friends for Christmas this year, or 10, who knows. There we go, so that is the cold process liquid soap diary for today, uh, the day after Thanksgiving. Okay, here we go, we've got our soap, our liquid soap, day two. I've um, smushed it and whipped it a little bit with my hand blender. Um, clarity is still, not very good. Uh, we'll give it a few more days. I'm just going to set this aside, check it once a day, um, and see what we've got. Let me just uh, show you what kind of texture we have. So it's quite thick and pasty and very, very clear. Uh, the whiteness is from my stick blender. Um, when we started, it was just those clear, clear, clear chunks. I'm going to take a few pictures of that. Let's see. What's going on? Okay. Hi everybody, this is Jennifer from Gentle Soaps and I'm here to show you how to make a uh, liquid soap. Now this is step two. This is three days after I've made my uh, cold process uh, soap. And uh, so let's have a look here at what's going on in the bowl. And um, I did find that I had to stir it down. So you have to keep an eye on your soap. If it starts to separate, just mix it back up. Um, if you've got a handy dandy uh, immersion blender, that works great. Um, I just wanted to show you how clear it is. This has got air bubbles in it because I'd mixed it again after it got hard and gel. But the whole thing was a complete gel, like that, that piece right there. You see that big piece? It was all completely clear with a very, very thin layer of oil on top, mixed it back in. It's still got some time to um, continue to saponify. And we're going to do a pH test using phenolphthalein. And I'm going to show you, um, we're also going to do a clarity test. So the first is the clarity test. And if you look right here, it's getting pretty clear. All right. And I mixed this up a couple of days ago so I could see without air bubbles what it'll look like. Now this morning, I put a few... I put, I put a teaspoon of my base over here into this with some water, about two parts um, water to one part 
soap and you know I get a thick creamy whip here which makes me think of you know body whip and stuff so maybe we'll be doing some some whip soap and we'll see how the bubbles hold in it um, if it holds that would be really cool to not have to buy uh, a body whip base to have your own that you can make at home so if I if that works with that we'll, we'll continue working on that um, but right now it's just full of air bubbles and it should settle um, and we'll next time we look we'll have a look at this and see what it looks like um, so now we're going to do the pH test. Now you can use um, strips of pH strips that you can buy um, in your local store. I'm just going to put on some gloves because I've already tested this, so I know it's not ready. But I wanted to show you guys how it's done anyway, and then give you a baseline for which to compare compare it with. Because working with um, phenolphthalein is so much easier than trying to match up a color on your pH chart. Um, so I've got some soap here that I made. This is my um, Christmas in Victoria soap. Isn't it beautiful? I love this. It's just an end piece. Somebody special to me is going to get. It's got flowers. Anyway, I digress. So there is our baseline. That's going to um, show us whether or not it's ready to compare it with the other. So here's one that I mixed up with water. And it doesn't matter if you use this or if you use it right out of your bucket. So I'm going to do both. So there's one out of there. I'm just scoop a little bit out of there and I'm just going to wipe my hands and use the phenolphthalein. Now the phenolphthalein, I had to import it in from China, believe it or not. I had a really hard time getting a hold of my lab supplies because I work from home. If you're having that problem, send me an email. I can um, get you a bottle of it. I think I might even put it in my Etsy shop just because it's um, kind of hard to get sometimes uh, here in Canada. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments if you want to get yourself some a hand on some of this. And it's not very expensive. Uh, the more expensive, most expensive part is the bottle. And isn't it cute? Isn't it a cute little bottle? All right, so here we go um, with the fetal failing test. So I'm going to put a couple drops on there. And look at that. It's pink. That's not a good sign. Put it on this one. Well, it looks like it's going to be okay. Huh? I wonder why that happened. No. No, watch it, watch it. It's also turning pink. It's gonna get pinker as it sits there. Oh, lost ya, there we go. So you can see it's very evident on the one that we've whipped up with a little bit of water. And now you can see that it's turning pink here. Now let's put it on this bar of soap I made uh, a few weeks ago. And we'll let it wait, we'll let it wait, we'll let it wait, nothing. So this is perfectly safe to use. <clears throat> it's also been super fatted. That's one really good reason to super fat your soap. Um, liquid soap, on the other hand, we want clarity. And so we're trying to get away from um, having uh, free fats in our formulas. So it will take longer, but as soon as you've got a clear reading, you'll know that your soap is fine. You can also do things to adjust the pH. You can add things like citric acid, perhaps. Um, but you need to make sure that your soap is within uh, under 10 in your pH because any higher and you're going to be burning and you're going to be um, causing irritation in your um, customer skin, which none of us want because, you know, that's, you know, lawsuit stuff. So, um, again, the clarity is coming along. The pH is too high. Um, and if you want to get some of this, just let me know. All right, so until next time. Uh, click like and subscribe if you want to learn more about soap making and beauty crafting. Um, we've got a lot of really exciting things coming up and uh, bubble wands will be released soon. The recipe, I've decided to, um, to do a special release on that, so wait for that on December 1st. All right, so until next time, this is Jen from Gentle Soap signing off.